enough to kill But not for voting You don't believe in war But what's that gun you're toting But you tell me were all the editorials and periodicals and news releases of what the demonstrators were going to do when they came to Chicago, poison the water and blow up this and kill the presidential candidates. And so those rumors helped to create some uneasiness on the part of police. There were meetings between the demonstrator leadership and the mayor's office, and those meetings were very difficult. There were rules were laid down and refusal to accept the rules. So that tended to increased the tension. And the men were jumpy, certainly family men concerned about their, their wives and their children, didn't know what was going to happen even though they were military men and trained for it and should have been in a state of readiness, there was still that uneasiness, I suppose on edge. There really was um, a group of organizers and anti-war activists who wanted to come to the Democratic Party to create a public that could be heard uh, with a message that we thought had tremendous moral urgency. And I think we were right. I mean, I still think that we were right about that. And there really was a Mayor Daley who wanted to um, show that in the face of what he perceived to be anarchy and the breakdown of everything he believed in, was really going to stand firm and really going to represent what he thought was you know, the best um, in kind of uh, the American tradition. And so those things really did clash. I think I felt like uh, most of the citizens of the city, why don't they go away? Why did they have to come here? Why don't they go to another city and demonstrate? Why did they have to do it here? I uh, met a lot of people who were just kind of caught up in the thing. It was the, the excitement of the moment. A lot of kids really were kind of just tagging along for the kicks. Really, they were kind of marching just helter-skelter, not knowing where they were going. There was uh, they were following a, a couple of individuals there, and there they are marching uh, eastbound on 11th Street. They get to Michigan Avenue, and uh, uh, apparently they, uh, they, they all saw that statue at the same time. And uh, they all focused on it, and that was it. They ran for it and made their way to the top. They took the hill, took the, took the, got up on the general's horse. This was one of the first violent uh, actions of, of that week. Uh, you know, we talked about leave, you know, leaving Lincoln Park and the violence there, but then uh, all the cameras were out here, I remember, and there were a number of people, and one guy came to the, the top of Logan's statue and got all the way up there, and I remember the police were asking him to come down, and he put out a, a Vietnamese flag, and he's, or a Viet Cong flag, and he's waving it around. And I remember they, the police were trying to bring him down gently, and as he came down, he fell and, and broke his arm. And the police really didn't react violently there, but it was projected that way. And, and people watching it and, and hearing about the guy who was pulled down from the statue and broke his arm, that, that fur further polarized the, the feelings on both sides. Then on the Wednesday evening, when they were having the rally at the um, old bandshell, uh, when they gassed them there, I decided I just can't sit here and not make my views known. And I just couldn't believe this. Um, cops on motorcycles, on those three-wheeled motorcycles that I told you, just driving us north. Um, I saw uh, some kids fall down uh, in panic. I mean, when you see this kind of thing happening, and, uh, and the uh, National Guard just walking over them and the, the motorcycle cops showing absolutely no respect for the fact that these people were lying there. I won't say they ran over them at that point, but they did later. And, and that's, when, that's when it just got crazy because there were more motorcycle cops up there and uh, they started beating the kids and there was lots and lots of tear gas everywhere. And um, that's when I first got hit and I decided that that this was absolutely insane, I ran into the loop and they beat me up at that time and that's when um, I got my face broken open here and here and um, 
um, they kick me and and it it they just worked me over well. I think the point was that I was the only one around. All the others had gotten away, and they were like, there must have been five, six of them. Demonstrators on Balbo did begin a retreat towards Michigan, but there were so many people coming in behind them uh, that proved very difficult. Uh, somehow in all of this, I ended up in the middle of the street, uh, facing towards the west, trying to get back to Wabash and get out of the way of the advancing line um, when I was hit. If you've ever had the experience, my peripheral vision just immediately went down to a pinpoint. I did not lose consciousness. I was able to clear my head, get my bearings. And all of a sudden, bricks and rocks started coming at us, and some of the policemen were falling down. And they were coming from the field, and we were standing there. They had to come up on us. We couldn't get on them. We were we're standing in line. We're on the orders of our sergeants and lieutenants to hold the line. Well, did you attack them in any manner, or did you move toward them in an aggressive manner? How could we when we were in the police line? I thought they were nuts. They were dressed up in steel helmets. They had human waste in, uh, in these little bags, cellophane bags, where you could see it, and they were threatening to hit us with it. I remember getting rocks thrown at me and beer glasses dropped out of the 16th floor of the Hilton at me, beer bottles, and we run out of the awning and keep from getting struck. There's a fellow named Costello standing next to me and it finally, it just quieted, finally it quieted down. And the demonstrators were sitting in, you know, on the other side of the sidewalk, probably a 10 foot wide sidewalk on Michigan Avenue. We were at the curb and I turned to Costello and I said it finally quieted down and with that, I saw something, something coming in, and before I could turn my head back, it just missed the edge of my helmet and caught me right on the cheekbone. And the fellow I met a few years later was across the street, saw me, he said, you went down like a, like a rock. There's a lot of 21, 22-year-old cops up there. A lot of them went to the hospital. No one said too much about that. You know, and, and those folks came to our town to cause trouble. The police moved on the people. I mean, I, I know in my own life, I mean, and in, in that period, of, during the Democratic Convention, uh, it, anything I did uh, in relationship to the police came after, they came after us. There was a lot of tear gas, and there were a lot of police squadrons whipping into a crowd of people, and um, things were pretty heated up. And I remember uh, with several other people rocking this paddy wagon or squadron. I remember this, this police officer coming out of the car and grabbing us, grabbing me, and I took him down. And I remember looking at his gun, all right? And, and then I remember just saying, uh-uh, I don't want any part of grabbing this guy's gun or anything, you know, it just, and uh, that was it. So we never tipped the paddy wagon over. Um, when I got jumped by a police officer, I turned the tables on him down and I left. There were a lot of people who were clearly just simply pissed off, who were, you know, pissed off at the police, uh, pissed off at Daly. I don't know, you know, by that time a lot of people were taking things personally, you know, the cops and, and, and the, the demonstrators. And I think that the whole vision of, you know, we're going to mount this great protest against the Vietnam War had been lost, not lost, but just, you know, had enfolded into this, this drama that had really taken on a life of its own. You know, it was really mob rule on both on both sides. I mean, there, there were nobody, there was nobody, you know, it, it brought out the worst in everybody. Brought out the worst in Daly, brought out the worst in the police, brought out the worst in, in a lot of the people who were down there. There was a lot of provocation going on. You know, I don't think anybody could deny that. Participants of the demonstration actually at, attacked the police with their picket signs and that, and had a, 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 a physical altercation going on. And uh, that was, it got so bad over by the Hilton that they actually had to bring in the National Guard to help control it uh, because it was a, a constant physical confrontation going on. I've seen police officers use the force to arrest people, definitely, sure. I mean, they weren't coming along peaceably. When you went to put your hand on someone to arrest them, they started swinging. You can't let them beat on your head. You got to protect yourself, too, you know. We're supposed to go home in one piece at the end of the night. They don't pay us enough to get our head beat in. They were calling us all kinds of names. 
There were a lot of obscenities called on both sides. Um, they were telling us that we did not belong there. Um, they, were, they were using various ethnic epithets thrown at people. Um, they were calling women all kinds of names. Um, most of them were obscenities, and they, I think that they were used for incitement. Uh, they, they were caught up in a situation where they had to possibly arrest people. I do not think they necessarily were caught up in a situation where they were forced to incite people. They did not have to beat heads. Four years later, the arrests went through the court system. And the Illinois Supreme Court, in March of 1972, came out with a verdict fining the people for disorderly conduct for failing to disperse on a police order, for being part of a mob scene. This case was upheld. These people were convicted. And the Supreme Court of the state of Illinois praised the police department for all the things that it did and the tactics and supported them. Now, isn't that strange?